Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray one prayer point before we begin to ascend tonight. We're going to ask for desperation. You see, there's not enough desperation in this house. Desperation is what changed the garment of the women with the issue of blood. Desperation is what made the woman that had an age-long affliction bent over, come to Jesus and say, woman, thou art loose. How desperate are you tonight? You have come here to meet with the King of Kings. I'm just a vessel. The Spirit of the Lord is in this building right here. And that heart of desperation can change your life forever. Lift your voice in one minute and say, God, make me desperate tonight. Make, make me, desperate me more desperate tonight. than I ever been. Make me more, more desperate, desperate than I, I ever be. will. Make me desperate tonight. If you can meet Jesus face to face, what would you ask of him? What would you do? Make us desperate tonight, oh God. Desperate. We are desperate. We are desperate. We are desperate. I don't know if anybody here is tired. You came to deliverance and healing service. Anything can happen tonight. Anything can happen tonight. But it won't take me harsh. I'm desperation. Those of you watching online, don't just watch and look at the screen. Don't become a spectator tonight. God is set to do something. God is set to encounter you. But you need to be desperate. Scepter of the King of Kings. Sing that song with meaning. He's the Holy Ghost. There are no limits to the Holy Spirit. The age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's uprooting everything tonight yes, in obedience to Christ. Jesus. He's changing everything. Oh, yes, Lord. In obedience to Christ. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And he's uprooting everything. In obedience to Christ. And he's the Holy Ghost. And he's the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the Living God. He's the Holy Ghost. Begin to speak in your holy language. Begin to connect tonight. Begin to ascend in the realms of the spirit. You can choose to stay at level one, or you can choose to increase tonight. He is changing everything in obedience to Christ tonight. Ask God to ask Present yourself in obedience to Christ tonight. Masali Tamaya, Masali Tamaya, Askel in a Marosa, Askobriate, Askobriate, Asaverina Suvia, Asaverina Suvia, Ilana Marosa Taya. Somebody is changing, somebody is changing in this place tonight. I see the power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Coming on somebody tonight. Are you that desperate person? You are about to turn from the woman with the issue of water to the one everybody turns to as a sign and a wonder. A shot for Kata, Rekata, Delekaburia. Do you want to encounter a new dimension tonight? A shot on a Bakadea, a shot on a Bakadea, a Bakadea, a Semelea, a Semelea. Look at it, look at it. There's a power moving. Somebody came here with the burden for their generation, with their burden for their bloodline, with the burden for their children, and there is going to be power coming on such people tonight. Their mantles going to be released, that you will go out and become a deliverer. Ashebelaya, Ashebelaya, Ashebele. Somebody is getting a fresh touch tonight. Oh, somebody. 
is getting a fresh touch tonight. Masko Lana Baroska, my sete Baroska Talia, Alada Barasana, Aleta Baroska, Maska. There is a fresh encounter happening in this place tonight. A fresh encounter, a fresh encounter, a fresh encounter. This is the kind of night that you have to get loose in the presence of the King of Kings. Shaba Bakapaya, a skete, a semele, 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 Yes, Lord, in obedience to Christ. Yes, Lord, He's changing everything. everything. Yes, Lord, everything is changing in tonight. In obedience, in obedience, to and he's in everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In obedience to Christ. Thank you for your sweet spirit in this place in tonight. To Shahanda Vakapaya. Hmm. Somebody came here on their last straw. You came here as your last option. You didn't even want to come, but you said, Lord God, if I can just come into the building, maybe something will change. You have just met with your encounter of change tonight. This is the least you will ever be in this life. The Lord is lifting you up with his righteous right hand. The places where they mock you, they're about to celebrate you. The Lord is changing your story tonight. He is giving you beauty for ashes. If this is you, I need you to give the King of Kings a big shot of praise. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You may please be seated tonight. Because God is said to do a lot here tonight. There's a lot that the Holy Spirit was telling me that is going to happen. And he said lives will change. It's changing from the inside out. So I want to say I celebrate all of you who came here tonight. Because listen, those who come to church at 6 p.m. are a different kind of people. Because everybody else is at home winding down, getting ready for the week, but here you are about to shift the atmosphere. So give yourself a big round of applause. And everybody connected online, I celebrate you all. I counted a great privilege to be able to hold this service. I want to thank my husband, my apostle, the Moses in my life who trusted me with a vision. I consider myself blessed amongst women to be able to have a general like that oversee Overseeing my household is a great privilege. So wherever you are, Apostle, I call him my president. I celebrate you and I love you and we miss you. So tonight is deliverance and healing service. And the Lord gave me this word weeks ago and I didn't even know what it was gonna be for. So when I had to take the word for today, I said, okay, God, you prepared us ahead of time. And I believe that, you see, when we're going through the journey and we're asking God, why me, why me? Which is oftentimes the story oftentimes the question that we ask the Holy Spirit and he oftentimes has answers but if we can only dig a little bit deeper into that answer we'll be able to have solution but before I get into the word I want to ask a question I'm gonna take a census here tonight how many people in this house have parents that have prayed for them Christian parents who come from a Christian home right okay that's good how many people in this house tonight have parents that have the understanding of deliverance, altars, covenants, and all of that? Okay, maybe one, two, three, about three people. So how many people here are the first in their family to ever embark on the journey of deliverance? Wow, it's about 80% of people in this house tonight. You see, this is the story of many of us, especially those of us that have come to Army of God. We are the first to do many. And I didn't understand this revelation until one day, in one of my prayer cries, I began to cry out, not just for myself, but all the people that called me every day and say, when is it going to be my time? When is it going to be my turn? I have prayed, I fasted, I did everything you asked me to do. I'm tired. And I began to cry out to God. And he said, you must understand, there is a difference between a first generation line breaker 
and a second generation line breaker. So tonight's word I've titled first generation line breaker. We're going to take the word tonight from 1 Kings chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. And we're going to just give a little bit of context before we get into some deep teaching tonight. And I believe that deliverance is going to take place throughout the course of the word. Amen. 1 Kings 5, verse 3 says, You know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of his wars which were fought against him on every side until the Lord put his foes under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. Hmm. There is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. I'm going to even read verse 5. It says, Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As I have promised David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But we're going to take it back to that three and four. He says, because wars which were fought against him on every side. This verse here was talking to Solomon. But if Solomon could never be a beneficiary of this word and this covenant, if David did not fight the wars on every side. Listen, the reason why we're asking God, because we're too busy as first generation line breakers, looking at second generation line breakers and wondering how come their prayers are getting answered? How come they say a word and it turns out in their favor? How come things are getting delivered to them? What about me? You must understand the line that you're fighting on. You cannot put yourself in a position of a second generation line breaker when you are a first generation line breaker. There's no way a covenant could have been established with Solomon if David did not fight the wars. When you're coming, you're the first. Like I asked everybody here tonight, who is the first to introduce deliverance to your bloodline? Do you know what that means? I need you to process that tonight. You are the first to challenge the altars. I'm not talking about altars conducted by humans. Altars conducted by powers, principalities, covenants, strongholds in your bloodline. You are the first. The war's on every side. Before you came in the picture and said, I'm tired. Before God called you, there was a covenant that kept everybody in your family bound. Some of you are facing marital uh, situations, barrenness, poverty, all kinds of things. Because there are covenants established that said nobody in this family should move forward. That there are covenants established that says if this family does not continue to align to the rules of Satan, nobody will break free. So you're looking at the second generation line break, and I'm talking to you because these are the questions that I was asking before God downloaded this revelation to me. He said you need to put yourself in the position of David and Abraham and Moses and people like that to understand who God has called you to be. You cannot expect to be a Solomon when you're a David. Your children will tell the stories of Solomon, but you must tell the story of David. When you understand that perspective and you put your hat on properly, you'll be able to fulfill destiny. You see, when we're talking about bloodline and first generation line breakers, what you're up against, if you don't process it, you will, life will just pass you by like this. You'll be passing by life thinking, God, you have forgotten me. You'll be the one telling God you're a partial God. I've said it myself before. I said, God, you're partial. I know I read in the Bible that you are not a partial God, but I'm telling you that you're partial. And I thank God for his mercy because, you know, he's so compassionate. He doesn't wipe some of us out with some of the things we say. But as I was telling him this, he looked at my heart. He knew where I was crying out from. I'm not asking for results to show off. I just want to end the lineage bondage in my bloodline. That's all I'm asking. But he said, if you don't begin to fight the wars, when we're talking about wars, we're talking about weights. We're talking about strongholds. We're talking about bronze gates. We're talking about iron bars. We're talking about altars and covenants. This is what you are up against. So if you don't understand the context of this, you'll be fighting wars physically when you're supposed to be fighting them spiritually. You'll be looking at everybody else, jealous of people, fighting your friends, fighting other people, wondering, God, why is my own taking so long? Somebody has to break the bronze gate and break the iron bar for everybody else to pass through. As I get deeper tonight, I'm going to give an illustration because I love the way Apostle did this a couple of weeks ago because you won't understand unless I give you an illustration tonight. Can I have my volunteers? 
Thank you, Jesus. This is what made me realize that, see, the first to do things, the people that break the gate, these are the legacy makers. When your children are telling the stories of freedom and they have been settled all around, no battles on any side, you begin to understand that why God chose you. Listen, if you don't begin to challenge the bronze gates and the iron bars, the rest of your lineage, your children will be shedding the same tears that you are shedding today. And the reason why God has placed a burden in your heart for deliverance is because he knew that you had what it takes. But you're looking from the wrong perspective. You're looking at the Solomons. Meanwhile, you are a David. You're looking for God to do it like this. But he's saying that I've already delivered everything that you need. I have released it to you. All things have been given freely to you. But you must be able to take on the full armor of God. You must be able to build the capacity to break the bronze gates and cut the iron bars. Because if you don't do so, Guess who will run into them? Your children. Your nieces, your nephew, your lineage, your siblings will fight the battles that you refuse to fight. Thank you guys for this, for the volunteers. Give them a round of applause. Can you please unravel this? So I have two examples here. We're going to have our second generation line breaker. This is her. She looks beautiful. And we have Esther, <laughs> our first generation line breaker. Right. So let's say, for example, these two ladies, you know, they, uh, well, she's a first, so she doesn't have parents that were praying, but Doyen has had parents that were praying. She grew up in a sound church. They have done deliverance after deliverance, all of that, but she never really encountered God for herself. So let's say they're about the same age, maybe 20 or so, and they decide to get to know Christ for themselves. They grew up maybe together. They, you know, they've, they've done a lot of things together, so they encountered God together. So now Doyen decides to encounter Jesus, and so does Esther. But as soon as Esther decides to encounter Jesus, remember that Doni already has an altar established in her bloodline dedicated to Christ. Her parents were the Abrahams. Her parents were the David. Her parents have already been fighting the battle, so she is stepping in alignment and continuing the call. But Esther here, God himself had to call Esther because he heard the cry of my people in Israel and Egypt, and he said, I must raise a Moses. So Esther becomes the Moses. But as soon as as she wakes up and realizes, I don't want to be bound anymore. Guess what happens? Please. Because when you're dealing with altars, they will leave you alone. Maybe in the world she even decided, she even succeeded. She was successful. She was getting money. She had booze that were filling her. Okay? She was popular in school. She was lit. But now she has encountered Jesus. So the altars in her bloodline heard word of this and they said, okay. Let me see how you're going to make it in life. These ropes here represent the iron bars. This is when you encounter Jesus. Keep rapping. You encounter Jesus. Thank you. This is good. Give me that one. Yes. So you encounter Jesus now. She doesn't know that she's tied up. The enemies from her foundation have heard what she is called to do. They saw her future. So they were okay with her until the alignment with Christ came in. So now nobody, their bronze gates and their iron bars, who told you that you're gonna move forward in life just like that? Now, Sister Doyen here, her family has cleared the bronze gates and cleared the iron bars. So now they have started their salvation journey. Please come a little closer. Now, they've learned that you must pray, you must fast, you must join service group. You must praise. You must do everything. So Doing starts praising. Esther starts praising. Doing starts praising. Praying. They pray 12 hours every day. You know, whatever they tell you to do. Now, Doing begins to make progress. Go ahead. So as she's walking, she's getting married. She's getting money. She's getting her dream job. She's getting everything she desires in life. Now here is Esther. Keeps trying to move forward. The altar keeps dragging her back. There's bronze gates. There's iron bars. Every time she, they're praying the same amount of hours. Now second generation line breaker has moved all the way ahead. And here Esther is crying, Jesus, you have forgotten me. But she has no clue about deliverance. She doesn't know that if you don't pull down the altars, there is a strong man that will never, ever let you go. You say you want to have children? Let's see about that. You say you want to be a millionaire? Let's see about that. You say you want to fight and pull down? Let's see about that. You are a first generation line breaker. You see, this is where many of us at this place, the enemy says, you know what? We got to mess up our mind. I'm going to introduce new age. I'm going to introduce crystals. I'm going to introduce some 
some dude that will break her heart again. I'm going to introduce the wrong crowd to see if she can get a little bit of fake healing so that I can tie the rest of her generation down. But this time, Esther realizes this is not like before. I may have fallen for that in the past, but I've encountered Jesus in a different kind of way. So though I will stay, I'm bound for now, but I will stay here and be slain until I catch my revelation in time. Doing has already passed by her. At this stage, everybody's asking, where's your God? Everybody's asking, you don't pray enough. Meanwhile, Esther has been fasting dry for 30 days. Everybody's saying, oh, maybe you're not serving God the right way. She doesn't realize that every time she's moving, the strong man drag her back. So maybe she now got to a place where, okay, let's make her make a little bit of progress. She finds a man of her dreams. It's time to get married. But there's a bronze gate in her bloodline that says you will never marry the right man. Esther has to go all the way back to square one. Many second generation line breakers are looking at first generation line breakers asking, where is your God? Stop asking me, where's my God? I am pulling down altars that you never had to pull down. Your parents pulled down the altar. You will never know what it's like to fight my battles. You will never know what it's like to be a David. You will never know what it's like to be an Abraham. But somebody has to be it and it's us. When you realize who you are, you will fight a little bit differently. So at this place, although she is all the way back here, the Lord knows that she is going to be the legacy She is going to be the one to create the family lineage like Doeen's parents did. So the Holy Spirit now comes and he wraps his arm around her, give her a hug. At this point, she's getting to know who the Holy Spirit is. She's building intimacy with Jesus. She's looking at the promises ahead. She's wondering, okay, God, even though everybody has forgotten me, everybody keep asking me, where's your results? There are things happening to me that I've never seen happen to anybody before. Everybody is misrepresenting me. Nobody likes me. The people are fighting her to make sure that she aligned with Satan again. But she is being comforted by the Holy Spirit. She is getting deep revelation. She is getting a deep understanding. Many of you are at this place right here, right now. And you're wondering, what is this all for? You must be the one to write the blueprint. Because you know what happens? As she is intimate with the Holy Spirit, she begins to build prayer capacity. So now the bronze gates begin to break. They begin to loosen. The Lord begins to give her downloads. As she is remaining right here, all of the urgency. She is no longer fighting to begin to meet with the standards of people. She has understood her assignments. So at this point, she is at the posture of surrender. She begins to go through all the principles that I'm going to teach today about how to shorten and shorten your length of time in captivity. Your captivity is not captivity, it's for a divine purpose. You are a first generation line breaker. I pray that your children as a first generation line breaker will align to Christ and continue the legacy that God is using you to build. Because if you can stay put, I'm telling you, if you can do the needful and build your capacity, your children will be telling the stories of their mother, their grandmother, who cried the tears at night, who was the one praying for hours, who was the one serving, who was the one doing it all just so their children will not tell the story. Brethren, when you understand who you are in Christ, you will fight a little bit different. It is not that Christ has forgotten you. Because you know what? There's a power at every altar. The reason why Donyin moved here so fast, because what we didn't show you is when Donyin was on this journey. Because don't get it twisted. Even a second generation line breaker has battles. Nobody has a perfect life. But when you create an altar with God, and God comes to you like he did to Abraham, I will establish a covenant with you in the place of intimacy. And he tells you, I'm gonna establish a covenant with you and your children will sit on the throne. What they don't understand is that now the Holy Ghost is committed to your progress in life. So although, I'm gonna need you now to be the Holy Ghost here. So when Doyen was on her life, what what you didn't see is that when a strong man tried to come at the altar, there was a power blocking Doyen because of the foundation. When they tried to stop her marriage, 
it was drawn away. When they tried to stop her finances, the, there was a power at the altar fighting the strong man. So yes, don't you move with ease as a second generation line breaker because there's an established covenant with Jesus. The same way, the same way when sister here was being intimate with the Holy Ghost, the Lord was communing with her. She didn't know that her children like Donnie, we're going to tell the tales, we're going to tell the battles, we're going to tell the stories that if you can stay persistent, you will be a second generation line breaker. Now, when sister here has built capacity and everything is now broken, all the chains have come off. You know what's going to happen? That distance that you see, you see, because you see God is a just God. He said, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. You may have lost everything, but today I will restore double. I will lay a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You see that wedding that they said you wouldn't have? In the place of intimacy, I already told you what to do. So now the whole world will tune into your kingdom marriage. You see that money that those altars said you wouldn't have? Not only are you going to have money, but you will be a billionaire. You will be a millionaire. You will create legacies that have never been done before. If you, because you stayed the course. Ah, Shabra Katalia. Everything that the devil said you couldn't have, you will have double. Now, Sister Esther, run to the finish line like you never ran before. What, when Sister Donnie was walking, sis was staying in one place, but when God decides to do it for you, you will not walk, you will run. You will not walk, you will run. You will not stroll to your finish line, you will run to your finish line. In the name of Jesus. Ladies, you may be seated, thank you so much. See, we're gonna pray and deal with a few things tonight. But you had to understand so that you will not be fighting the wrong fight. Yes, you're going to go through battles. Yes, there's going to be time. Because you know what it takes to cut an iron bar is time. It is not a one, two, three, as many in the kingdom would like to say. And I didn't give this illustration for anybody to hate on second generation line breakers, amen? When you see one, you celebrate them. You know why? because they understood the assignment and they decided to continue the altar of fire. A second generation line breaker can either be the one that just benefits from all of the things their parents did. Or they say, you know what? My parents fought a fight. Now I want to create something for my generation. I'm gonna take advantage of my backing. I'm gonna take advantage of the fire and I'm going to shoot like a shooting star. I'm gonna make sure I run faster than the chariots so that I will encourage the first generation line breakers that if you will stay the course, you will be proud of your children like my mother is proud of me. You will be proud of what you have left behind. You will be an Abraham. You will be a Moses. You will be a David. You will change the world. But listen, it comes with some strategies. And that's why God, you know, I love Jesus so much that he never leaves anyone stranded. He knows why. Somebody has to do it. Tell your neighbor, say, somebody has to do it. I know it's hard. I know you want to give up but somebody has to do it. Now we're gonna list, how do we shorten our time? Because you see, if the enemy can frustrate you to make sure that what is supposed to take one year takes 20 years, that is the objective of a Christian that refuses to relent. You see, many people, because they don't have deep understanding of deliverance, they fight a battle for 40, 50, 20 years because they don't have spiritual strategies to shorten the time frame that it takes to be able to catapult. And I'm gonna share some tonight. What does it take, thank you Jesus, what does it take for a generation, first generation line breaker to shorten the length of time? As we always say here, you need an alignment with God. This is not just a normal alignment. You need to surrender to God. You must understand that you don't have time like everybody else. I'm sure you're one of those people that somebody else can do the exact same thing you did and get away with it. But as soon as you do it, everything is over. You're all the way back. Do you understand why now? 
Because you don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste. You must come in total alignment with God. The reason why, some of, why God put some of y'all in a chokehold is because that's the only way he can get your attention. Because he put the mantle on your head. And he knows that if this one can come in full alignment in your character, in your lifestyle, though it is not easy, but he will strengthen you in the process. Number one is total, total alignment. The kind of alignment that friends will laugh at you because of your alignment. The kind of alignment that your family will mock you, but God is downloading to you a revelation to shorten your length of time. Because he knows that if you allow the enemy to get a hold of your walk, you will be right back there and die there. Even if you decide to give your life to Christ, you will end up there again. That's why I ask the first question. You see, when you have parents that pray for you, praying for you is different from the understanding of deliverance. I've had parents that prayed for my salvation. My parents, are, my stepdad and my mom, by the grace of God, are Christians. And they prayed for me to get saved, but nobody knew the kind of altars that I was up against. My biological father, who I didn't know, and I'm believing God for his salvation, there are so many things in his bloodline that it was unbeknownst to me. I didn't know him for a majority of my life. So here I am fighting battles that went beyond me. This is the story that some of y'all here are experiencing. So if God doesn't put you in total alignment, unusual alignment, that is why he will keep anything you try to do that is not in alignment with God. He, God will allow you to be frustrated because he'd rather allow you to be frustrated temporarily so that you will not waste another 20 years fighting an unnecessary battle. Meanwhile, he has positioned you to have speed and catapult into your destiny. You must come in alignment. You see, because when you decide to go one foot in, one foot out, Let's see that, that maybe one day you decide, you know what, I'm tired of being abstinent. You decide to fornicate. Not only are you putting the next generation in more bondage, but all of the prayer, the fasting that you have been doing is thrown in the garbage. Because, you see, let me, maybe, the, even if the second generation line breaker does it, they're in trouble too. But there is, you have no backing on the altar. You have no powers. There is nothing in your roots that is standing firm and saying, I got my hand on this one. You are the one to establish that. So if you waste time doing the mundane, you are going to frustrate your life. So number one, brethren, is total, total alignment with God. Number two, make your life useful to Jesus. It's not just about alignment. You must be available to God. When we talked about in the other service, Mark 11, uh, chapter 2, when he says, untie the cult and bring it here. You will not be untied unless you are useful. Jesus needed a donkey to ride. And he knew that the donkey was ridden. But if he can untie the donkey, Jesus will be able to get from point A to B. When your life is tied up like first generation line breaker, if God cannot use you to get from point A to B, you will remain tied up in the corner. God needs you to make your life useful, meaning whatever he tells you, you surrender. Even when it is not easy, it's not going to be easy, but it is temporary. There will come a point in time where you will rejoice, you will, you will be able to share your testimonies, you'll be able to celebrate, but God needs to make sure he can use you. He might send you to do the kind of odd things that nobody else can do, but you know what? The least is the first. The last becomes the first in the kingdom. The greatest amongst all is the servant. So when he's telling you make your life useful, he might tell you to take a posture that is not fancy to the flesh. That is a step to be able to be loose. Step number two, there's about 10 steps here and the Holy Ghost will give me the grace to break them down before we pray tonight. Because I don't want you to keep, I, I, can, see, I can see the struggle in the realms of the spirit, but if you can have this understanding tonight, if my only job tonight is to give you this revelation, I'm telling you, you'll be 90% over the battle. Make your life useful to God. Forget about your time. Forget about your desires. Forget about what you want to do, where you want to travel. Listen, for many years of my life, as a young lad, a young lady, I gave my life to Christ at the age of 21. I mean, genuinely, even though I grew up in church, I had my own encounter with God at 21. For many years, I have not gone to vacations like everybody else. For many years, I cannot do the things that other people do. Not because I didn't want to, but I don't have time to waste. My life has become a sacrifice because I must make up for the 60, 100, 300 years in my bloodline that has kept captivity, kept us captive and bound in our generation. My life is useful to Jesus because I understand the assignment. Not because I don't want to have fun. 
When some people ask me, oh, would you like to, you know, go to this place? I want to invite you. My first thing is, let me pray about it. It's, it may seem foolish. I'm just inviting you to a restaurant. I got to pray about it. You know why? Because my life is 100% useful. There's things that I have to pull down. There's blood, there's blood crying out against me in my bloodline. There's human blood that has been shed in my own blood. I don't know what has happened in your own bloodline, but some of us don't have time to waste. My life must be 100% useful. Maybe that time that I went to dinner is the time that God required of me to go out on the streets and evangelize because those in captivity that have established the intimacy with the Holy Ghost is the one that people use, that God uses to draw in the people to the heart of God. So he can't use everybody. You know why? Because the people that have availed themselves to God are building capacity when he said in Ezekiel I sought for a man to stand in the gap and he couldn't find any you are the man you are the woman because in the days of captivity when all you could do was cry and pray guess what you were doing you were building capacity you were making yourself useful to God and God knows that your kind is rare there are many second generation line breakers by the grace of God because of what is being introduced. But to you who has to be the first, there's a depth that you go to with Christ that many will not be able to go to. So you must make your life useful to God. Number two, study your opponent. You see, a lot of times when you're in this journey, you don't know how the enemy comes up and give you an uppercut. You're on the journey, you're wondering, okay, I thought I was making progress. My capacity, I was building spiritual muscles and loosening the bounds. What happened? How did I end up back here again? You, are, you fail to study your opponent. You see, sometimes when you have mastered a certain area in your life, the enemy is not going to come from that area. If you know you don't have a battle with fornication and maybe you're dealing with weed or you're dealing with lying or, or your attitude or your anger, you must understand how the enemy comes up against you because he will use anything to gain a legal ground to hold you captive again. That is why at the, almost at the finish line of whatever you're asking God for, the enemy comes and sneaks an attack upon you. So you have to, this is why you can't just be moving everywhere anyhow. You must learn to up maintain quietness in the realms of the spirit because what is coming for your head is not what's coming for everybody's head. There are some of the voices that you're battling with on a daily basis, the voices from your, in your mind, the voices from your family, the voices from everywhere because you are a Jesus roller but don't nobody understand why you're still in the same spot. Study your opponent so that you don't remain in an unnecessary spot. If the enemy knows that any time you move with a certain person or you have a certain conversation, pay attention. What provokes your anger? What provokes your lust? What provokes your tiredness? Maintain the posture of vigilance because you know what? This is how spiritual hackers come in the picture. There's something called spiritual hackers. When you begin to relax in a certain area, they shoot an arrow at your spiritual life. And then next thing you know, okay, I was doing well yesterday. Why can't I pray today? Some of y'all don't even pay attention to your dreams. Study your opponent. When something happens in your dream, you give up instead of studying. Okay, every time I'm praying and I'm praying about my marriage, there's a spirit spouse that comes and sleep with me in a dream. And then you give up at the wrong time. The reason why the spirit spouse came and slept with you in a dream is because you built a new capacity. So now he has to reinforce the covenant to keep you bound. But because you built new capacity, use that capacity to break the spirit husband's head. Don't just wake up and cry. Begin to release your bullets. Begin to pray harder. Place your eye on the target. When you have an experience like that, don't be praying about financial breakthrough. Stay on the matter. That's, how I, that's what I mean by keep your eyes on your opponent. Because a lot of times we have that dream. Okay, we give up in that area. Let me pray for something else. God said, deal with that one first. Then you have a dream that somebody put you in your old village again or your old school. That's a covenant of retrogression. You are not studying your opponent. You have to stay on the matter until you get results. Anytime I have a silly dream, there was one dream I had. Jesus, that my, some, my, they used my mother's face and said I have to wear the shoe that she wore. Can you imagine it? That means that I have to walk the path that my mother suffered from in the past. The devil is a liar. I woke up and I began to wage a good warfare. I began to pray and said, any shoe from my bloodline that the enemy wants me to repeat, I set that shoe on fire. I stayed there for seven days fasting and praying because I got my eyes on the opponent. Opponent, ain't no way that I'm going to be in a place of captivity. And then you want to put shoes on my leg. The devil is a liar. 
I prayed that prayer until I saw a different shoe in my dream. Many of you just see things. The enemy come for your head and you allow the enemy to do that. You are not to be bullied. You're a first generation line breaker. God is waiting to see the kind of muscles you will develop in your secret place. Keep your eyes on your opponent. If the enemy took something away from you in a dream that is precious, pray until you get it back. He took a job from you, pray until you get it back. Just because you're breaking bronze gates and iron bars doesn't mean you can't see results. But it will take your spiritual empowerment to see it. Because God knows that the price you're paying is not just for you. It is for many generations. Number four. Or is it number three? Number four. Fasting and prayer. Fasting is a wrestling match with the enemy. You see, Isaiah 58 verse 6 said, This is the fast that I have chosen. To loose the bounds of the wicked. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every single yoke. See, fasting, if you can understand the power of fasting, you will gain mastery over the flesh. Fasting is not just, okay, I'm, first of all, fasting is not how you get God's attention. You don't need to do that because you already got God's attention. Fasting is an exercise, a spiritual exercise that subdues the areas where the enemy can attack you. So when you're fasting, you're quieting the voice of your flesh. You're telling your flesh that and your soul that I, the spirit man in me has mastery over you. So the flesh cannot have you go this way. The flesh cannot have you go that way when you're supposed to go this way. Many people say the Lord spoke to me to do this, but it wasn't God speaking to them because you haven't mastered over your flesh yet. When you're going through the process of deliverance and you have not done things in the spirit realm to subdue certain actions that the enemy will use, you must stay in the position of fasting and prayer. This is why when we preach, stay in the posture with God. Don't be in a rush to go and do things on the stage. We're telling you this so that you can actually be victorious in life, not to keep you in one place. Many people started prophesying be before they, began, they gained mastery over the flesh. Now when you're prophesying to somebody else, people are doing deliverance for somebody else. Not that you don't have the authority, but you didn't deal with what was in your bloodline. So you know what happens? Your people in your bloodline aligned with somebody else's bloodline and said, let's make life a living hell for this one. She thought that she could do this. We'll see about that. Now you got a gang up of different bloodlines coming for your head. Stay in the posture. Get your deliverance. Do what you need to do and break the bounds, break the iron gates. Fast and pray until God says, you know what? You have enough capacity to go forth. This was my story for a long time. Years ago, even though I was praying fasting, apostle could never get me to preach anything. You know why? I knew what I was up against. Apostle has already built enough capacity. He's been praying since nine, over 30 years. So yes, you can do what you need to do, but I know you believe in me, but I will stay and maintain my posture in my secret place because I'm not after temporary fame. Because let me tell you, Leviathan will allow you to break out a little bit. The things in your bloodline will allow you to get results. Then when you get the results, they will meet you with failure at the age of success. That is a harder way to fall than you falling from down here. I don't want to tell that kind of story. I paid attention. I said, God, direct me. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind being in obscurity. I don't mind staying in a place where nobody knows my name. I don't, like, I don't mind being unheard. I don't care. I don't mind being a nobody because I'm a somebody with God. When you're a somebody with God, fasting and doing what you need to do, not just for yourself. I looked at my children every day. I know what I suffer. The stories that I even share here cannot even do justice to where I'm coming from. I told you that there's human blood in my bloodline demonic things that are ha still happening. So if I don't build the kind of capacity, the enemy will keep me in a chokehold. I don't have the chances like many people do. I know my assignment. I am a David. Fasting and prayer subdue the flesh because the enemy will have you act up in ways you did not even mean to. Now when it's time for you to get that husband, there's a demon of anger that possessed you. You don't even know when it comes up. Now that demon of anger projects itself and your kingdom genuine spouse is like, whoa, 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 oh, no, no, no. And you don't even know what happened. You're like, I, I, I didn't even know how to, because you have not dealt with that part of your flesh. Fasting and prayer. The enemy is impulsive. He will make you take actions that you did not desire to take. This is the study I've been studying. I studied my opponent. Why do I keep, God will allow you to fall and rise so that you can understand the patterns. Please don't take fasting for granted, brethren. 
I know we talk about different ways of fasting, but fast the way that will subdue your flesh. Abstain from food for a certain amount of time. Not just fasting from social media, man. Amen? Do the needful. Anytime your flesh is crying out for something, quiet your flesh. The best way to hear the voice of God is the voice that is telling you to do something that will get you excited. Go against that voice and do the opposite on purpose. You will discover that that opposite is the voice of God. Because when God is speaking to you, it is never going to gratify your flesh. When you begin to enjoy life is because you have already died to the flesh. That's why the Bible says they who love their lives will lose it, but they who lose their lives will gain it. So when you see people flourishing in Christ, they have already died to the flesh. So they're not moving based on decisions of the flesh. God is the one moving their direction, ordering their steps because the flesh is no longer the master. The enemy has lied to so many people and misplaced them in life because of the altar. You think the devil will allow you to get freedom just like that? You must go against what the enemy is saying at all times. That's the way you gain speed in life. Yes, I was in obscurity for, many, for a long time, but today I'm still very young and I'm making progress by the grace of God. I'm breaking the iron bars and I'm building capacity. And that shall be your story in the name of Jesus. Now, the next one, which we already talked about many times, is consecrated and priesthood lifestyle. I don't need to focus on that. But this next one is very important. Align with higher mantles. People of capacity. Listen. You saw the illustration. How long do you think it would have taken sister here to break out of that? What broke the bronze gates and the iron bars is revelation, capacity, and the things I'm gonna talk about right now. If you do it by yourself, what is supposed to take you five years will take you 20 years. Because a man has to be sent to you. My husband here was the man God sent to me. What I accomplished in a little bit of amount of time is because I aligned to a higher mantle. Now, even if you're not married, if God sends you a genuine man and woman of God that understands the assignment, has paid the price for the fight, they know the fight you're dealing with. So when you cannot break free, guess what happens? You align with the higher mantle. The demons in your bloodline knows the higher mantle. So when they're pulling you back and then the person comes and prays for you, guess what's going to happen? They will let up because they are afraid of the one who has built capacity. So when you don't have the capacity yet, align to where the capacity is. So many people are pursuing the wrong things, inconsistency. The, the devil is setting everybody up because they have deceived, especially my generation, who is after enjoyment of the flesh. Oh, do what makes you feel good. Go to the places where you're, you're you know, you're, they'll tell you that you're going to do this and break out in, in a few minutes. Oh, you're going to get a breakthrough. How are you going to get a breakthrough when you haven't broken the bronze gates? Don't believe the prophecy. Yes, it is for you, but you must do the needful and go through the process, the process. This is how we get hyped and get let down. And then we say, God has forgotten me. He has not forgotten you. He knows the process. Alignment. Alignment. I don't know how else to say it. Because let me tell you, see, there's sometimes even people tell us that they see us in our dreams and slaying certain demons and all of that. Because of alignment, we... God has to make somebody pay the price, right? So let me tell you now, when homegirl is in the corner and she realizes that she's bound, so now she's fasting and praying and you saw the struggle. Every time she fasts and prays, they pull her back. When you are in alignment, what, it, what happens is that those who, are you're in, who are, you're in alignment with becomes your battle buddies. Not even necessarily holding your hand every single time, but there's a heart alignment. There's a posture that you have taken. This is, I'm not talking about idolatry. I'm talking about a system of honor. There's a difference. So now the honor comes from, man, you have built capacity in this area. I want to understand how to pay this kind of price. I want to come in alignment. I want to know how you were able to download these revelations. I want to know how you have built longevity in prayer. How does it work? Okay, let me come in alignment. Let me, see, let me follow as a sheep. I follow you as you follow Jesus. I, you teach me how to follow Jesus like you. As you're praying, I'm praying along with you. As you're studying, I'm catching it. This is why the absence of church is a detriment to the body of Christ how will you learn how to fight the battles if you're going to do it by yourself do you know how long it will take you 20 40 years to build capacity like apostle and many other great men and women of God now me as for example as I'm married to apostle what they wanted me to do is get out of alignment so that now God sent me my Moses right that's why it took the Israelites 40 years instead of 11 days 
They were supposed to get across the Jordan in 11 days, 40 years, because they were disrespecting Moses. When Moses told them, go right, no, I'm going left. Oh, this is taking too long. I'm tired of the manna. I'm going to go ahead and build an idol. Went back right into ca captivity. Alignment. We cannot skip that because you know why? You don't have the capacity yet. But somebody has paid the price. Somebody has been fasting, staying on their watchtower. This is why I see people, oh man, I see my generation doing things anyhow. And I'm just looking from a place of... You don't even understand what, what's happening in the realms of the spirit. Disrespecting people, being rebellious because it's a seed of Leviathan. Because Satan knows your rebellion will extend your journey. You can deceive yourself and say, oh, I could guess you may be able to do it by yourself. Yes, absolutely. Nobody said you can't do it. But are you ready to pay 40 years price to do what you're, you're supposed to do in 10 years? Alignment to higher mantles. I align with higher mantles. Apostle aligns with higher mantle. That as you are building your own capacity in your own call, in your own direction of life, you have backing with you. You got the Godhead and then you got the angels that represent those who you're in alignment with. So when you're trying to fight, you're not fighting with just you. Their angels begin to fight for you. The powers that they have established on the altar begin to speak for you. This is how it goes in the realms of the spirit. Forget about people who are bankrupt with spiritual knowledge. Listen to those who have real spiritual depth. Alignment is key. This is how Elisha was able to get a double mantle. Joshua, when God spoke to him, he said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Joshua was Moses' assistant. He followed Moses. He watched how he was on 40 days on the mountain. I may not have capacity, but I'm going to watch Moses until I get the same way. And that's why God could say, as I was with my son Moses, I will be with you, Joshua. So that when Moses was gone, Joshua learned all he needed to do. This is the difference between idolatry and honor. Idolatry, you want the man of God to do everything for you. Honor is an alignment that says, okay, you're going to teach me how to pray, I'm going to pray. I'm gonna, the man and woman of God will pray for you, but they will teach you. You got the same capacity. You got the same privilege. You got the same direction. You got the same understanding. If you can just stay in alignment and pay the price. Look unto Jesus, I'm just your assistant. But when you try to do it by yourself in rebellion, it goes from idolatry to rebellion. That's how the enemy has this generation in a cycle. Oh, I don't feel like it today. Oh, oh, this, the man and woman of God spoke to me anyhow. The enemy got you right back at square one. Honor knows that humans will be humans. Idolatry is expecting a God, but the God is a human. So then when you are idolizing people, you forget that they're still human. But when you honor people, you realize this is a human that I'm honoring. I just admire the depth you got with Christ. That's all that it is. It's a understanding to get what you got. When I see great men and women of God, I, I align, I, I begin to pray, Lord God, whatever grace has fall upon, fell upon this person, I receive that same grace in the name of Jesus. And then when I pray for that grace, I begin to see myself operating in that dimension. The Lord will give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah next one which is also goes with alignment is kingdom service exodus 8 1 says basically to narrate it it says that you were saved to serve let's read it thank you jesus exodus 8 1 please if somebody could please pull it up and the lord spoke to moses go to pharaoh and say to them to him thus says the lord let my people go that they may serve me when the Lord delivers you, you must find somewhere to serve. Even in the process of deliverance, find somewhere to serve. Because God needs people in his vineyard. Your service is not about the church, the man and woman of God. It's about I am serving God within this capacity. God has given me this ability. So I am doing my time in the realms of the spirit. So that I can continue on the path of freedom. Because when I serve, there's a protection around me. Because now God knows I'm an asset to the kingdom. If you don't have a depth, a, a place of commitment, what is going to hold you back from the enemy devouring you? Your service is leveraged in the realms of the spirit. Even when you don't know how to pray, I can serve. Even when you don't know how to study yet, I can serve. In the posture of service, the Lord begins to give you divine ability. But now we have a, the reason why people don't want to serve is that I want to take from Jesus only. I want to, give me, give me, give me. Your service is your commitment to God. This is what I can offer you. I am giving you my sacrifice. It might not be much, and God says it's everything to me. Then when the enemy tries to take you out, the hand of God himself is the one covering you. 
but you must, that's why we always sit here, understand the revelation of service so that you don't serve grudgingly and miss your blessing. So that you don't think that you're serving a human being, you're serving God through alignments. Understand the process. The Lord will give us revelation in the name of Jesus. Now finally, patience and faith. This is the second to last. Patience and faith. When you have done all to stand, let patience have its perfect work. You have followed the system. You have understood the battle. You have gone through the process of alignment. You're fasting, you're praying. The Lord will show you results in, in the spiritual realm. You'll begin to see things. You'll begin to have dreams. You'll begin to know you're breaking through. As soon as the enemy gets you to complain, oh God, that's a setup. As soon as the enemy gets you to deny Christ in a situation. Meanwhile, this is why the people of Israel, when they were eating quail for how long? The enemy got them to complain and that prolonged their journey. They started complaining when I was in captivity, I could eat broccoli and all of this. Why am I just eating quail every day? Manna from heaven, sorry. Why am I eating manna from heaven? We want meat. You're comparing your days in Christ to your days of captivity? Yeah, the enemy let you eat steak and all of that because you were in captivity. I'd rather eat leaves on my journey to freedom than steak in captivity. It doesn't make any sense. But the enemy will know if you can complain about this. God needs your faith. That's the open door to Jesus. Your complaining, your fear, your rebellion, your disobedience is an open door to Satan. So when you are making the progress, this is why we preach against rebellion. The enemy will snatch your whole entire progress in one shot. One shot. I'm telling you this. In, in ministry, in marriage, in any system. In the beginning of my marriage when I didn't understand that, I didn't know that hmm, I was being disrespectful in a way that I thought was normal and it was prolonging my journey in certain areas. God did not say because I'm married, oh, I, anything goes. I had to understand the system of faith, surrendering, patience, and alignment. Your patience. When you're waiting for your breakthrough, celebrating God, God, I thank you that you have done it. If the, if the Lord shows you a direction, okay, pray. I want you to pray about this. Keep praying against it. Keep pulling it down. In faith, not in fear. In faith, not in, not in a hastiness. Your faith and your patience. If God has promised you something, whether it's a marriage, whether it's an uh, assignment, whether it's anything, whether it's fortune, whether anything that God has promised you, stay in the posture of prayer and faith, knowing that my prayer request has already gone on. Be careful for nothing, but in all things and prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, give thanks to God for what you have prayed for. Patience. Sometimes it may take five years, ten years. Abraham, your process, it won't take you that long in the name of Jesus because of alignment, amen? See, Abraham was the first. He aligned to Melchizedek, but he was on the journey alone. You see how long it took Abraham? But Isaac and Jacob, their, their time was shortened because of the bloodline system alignment. It didn't take Joshua that long because he had a Moses. So when Abraham was on a journey, though it was prolonged, he had a baby at 100. He was patient, being fully persuaded. Don't let the enemy convince you out of the promise. You have paid the price already. Some of y'all been fasting and praying for how long? You're already at the finish line. God has already delivered it to you. Don't let the enemy get under your emotions. Don't let the enemy cause a dichotomy between you and your breakthrough. The Lord will give you grace in the name of Jesus. Because your emotions, when you can be discouraged, that's how the enemy throws an arrow at you. And when he throws an arrow at you, you see, when the enemy can't come up against you how he usually does, because you have capacity, right? He sneaks, the enemy is a punk. He sneaks into your emotions. He gets you weak mentally. So now when you're weak mentally, okay, now I'm going to get her to stop praying because her prayer is causing major damage. I'm going to get her to stop praying. So by the time you're on a journey of no prayerlessness, your capacity begins to reduce. You become weak in the spirit again. And that's how the enemy begins to attack. The Lord will not allow you to go down in the name of Jesus. You will wax greater and wax stronger. Now the last part is enforcing the restoration of all the years you have lost. When you are praying, ah! See, let's not be faking humility in the presence of the Lord. Everything you know you're supposed to have, call it. He said he called it 
those things that are not as though they were. Call it, I decree, every money that was robbed from me, every device, I call it back by time 10 in the name of Jesus. That man, the years that I have waited for the right spouse, I declare that my marriage shall be blissful. I will not suffer in marriage. Any strong man that wants to rear his ugly head in my season of enjoyment, I crush in the name of Jesus. Use your empowerment and enforce restoration. You have power. You cannot pray for hours and not obtain power. You cannot come in the presence of the Lord like this. Coming to church like this is a sacrifice. In the evening hours, it's a sacrifice. Hold on to that sacrifice and call your restoration. Lord, as I'm serving you like this, Father God, I will break forth on every side. I will not experience shame. You see, I get vexed in my... Anytime the enemy tries anything stupid, the enemy is in trouble. That's why he can't mess with me like he used to. I will make sure I become, I tear down the gates of hell. You got the wrong one. I will stay on the matter and release bullets every, se I don't get, seven hours, ten hours every day until I have done enough damage to the kingdom of darkness. Now, let's see if he will try you in that area again. Anything the enemy has taken from me, I demand it times ten. And I've seen it times ten. The Lord will restore you in the name of Jesus. Now, before we pray, I want us to address something as well. When you are on the journey as a first generation line breaker, you have to deal with the soul battles. You have to deal with the damages of the soul. You can't just pray from a spiritual realm. Because you know why? When you go through the things that a first generation line breaker does, the mockery, the questions, the downtroddenness, the loss of hope, you get something called spiritual PTSD. And this spiritual PTSD tells you all the time, their voice is speaking to you at all times, you're inadequate, you're not enough, or you have to fight for everything. So now when God wants to release your blessing to you, you don't know how to receive it. Because all you know how to do is fight. You have to deal with the places in your soul that will allow you to enjoy life, enjoy the blessings. You don't have to fight for the rest of your life. That is a season. There comes a time where you begin to operate in the realm of intimacy and abundance. You've already broken the bronze gates. The second generation line breakers don't have to fight like that. So why do you think that you won't one day actually overcome the battles? Now when the Lord reveal, re, uh, releases a blessing to you, you think it's going to be gone tomorrow. When I was fighting for my children, I, every day I'll be thinking, oh my God, maybe tomorrow I'll wake up and they're gone. It's a real fear. When you have gone through trauma and tragedy, you begin to think that that's the norm. It is not the norm. It's not the norm. You get money, you think the money will be gone tomorrow. So you begin to move in fear. Oh, you're praying in fear. Everything is in fear. You got to take care of your spiritual PTSD. All of the areas. Now when, big, now when you have prayed enough and the light has shined on you, you don't even believe that light is on you. When people are honoring you, you think, okay, they're trying to get something. Nah, they, I don't trust this honor. The enemy got you watching your back at all times. When God sends you genuine friends, you think that these people are about to stab you in the back because that's all you knew in the days of captivity. When you were in captivity, the enemy always set you with the wrong people. The enemy always positioned you in the wrong places. The, the enemy always put you with bosses that harasses you. The enemy always stole your job, stole everything from you. So all you know how to do is fight for your return. But there comes a point in time, you must take care of those things so that you can enjoy life. Ask the Holy Spirit, come into my soul. Heal my soul. This is real damages, I'm telling you. I had to realize this the other day when the Lord was trying to elevate me and I was, began to enter fast and pray. The Lord, hold up. What are you fasting and praying for right now? Because that was how my, my system was wired. I didn't believe that that level of honor was genuine. Not saying that you will not stay on the offense. You stay on the offense from the place of belief and faith, not from the place of fear. Your, your prayer life becomes a routine. You're pulling down things anyway. But then there's a point in time, the Lord has prepared a seat for you on the throne. You don't have to look at your fellow kings and queens with a side eye. They were, all, they were with you on the journey. That's when the Lord gives you discernment. Then you trust your relationship with the Lord. When the Lord gives you your spouse, you don't have to think it's from the devil. You pay the price for it. That's genuinely your husband, genuinely your man. This is how the enemy comes and tries to rob you of joy and happiness. It happened to me. The Moses that God sent to me, I began to fight him thinking he was going to be just like the rest. Then thank God for his capacity, he began to have patience and say, I am not like the rest. Calm down. We are here to fight together. I'm not fighting you. But you think everybody is fighting you because you're not taking care of the PTSD. It's real. 
The enemy will not rob you of your joy and happiness, amen? If we're going to be a generation of deliverance, I want us to understand the depth of deliverance. You went through what you went through to become a master. When you go through something for X amount of years, the Lord gives you mastery in that area. That's why I said you become a system. So if you're going to be a system, you must have the blueprint to be able to lay for other people the battles that you endured. You're going to write books from that battle. You're going to be telling stories. You're going to be preaching on major pulpits. You're going to be the keynote speakers in different places because you have gained stripes in the realms of the spirit. You'll be the ones writing the children's books. You'll be the ones writing the financial books. You'll be the one doing this and doing that. Your songs will go all over the world. You'll, you will mount up with wings like an eagle because you have gained mastery and you have become a system in that area. Celebrate the promises. Celebrate all that God has given to you. Don't live your life fighting for the rest of your life. There will come a point in time in peace. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to read something now. So Romans 12 to, um, verse 2. This will help us with how we can deal with spiritual PTSD. Because if you don't have a confidence at the level of growth that God's ascend you to, the voices of humans will dethrone you. You will listen to the voices of critics instead of the voice of God. When God begins to elevate you, people will be positioned at that place that are not from God to begin to tell you that. You sure? How did you get here? You don't deserve to be here. Who told you you had the right to be here? But God himself put you there. Before David obtained the king of Israel, they were mocking him as the king of Judah. But when he fought the Jebusites and he began to gain his stripes, the same people who mocked him came to him and said, actually, you're the only king that's qualified for us. God is going to send you to the same places that mocked you, but you must heal and forgive. See, that's why you need to heal, because if you don't forgive, the same people that you're supposed to lead and you're supposed to save, you will allow the scars to push them away. There are people that hate on you right now, but in a short while, they will come back and ask for your help. Just like Joseph and his brothers, God has equipped you to help them, but you have to heal first. When you have not healed, and you're trying to help people, you're, going, you're taking from a place you can't afford to take from. Take your time to heal with God. It's okay, it is human, if you're still a lover of Christ, if you need to take time to heal. That's why I don't pick up a mic if I'm bleeding. I will make sure I stop the bleeding first. Because I understand the assignment is not just about me, it's about God. So I don't wanna bleed on the sheet. It's okay to acknowledge I'm bleeding. Take your time and heal. Because you'll be pushing away sheep that are waiting for the slaughter. Meanwhile, the sheep need you to direct them to the shepherd. The Lord will heal you in the name of Jesus. Every scar, every battle that you have fought, everything that has laid damage to your soul, you're going to get healing tonight in the name of Jesus. The Lord will lift you up. He will wipe away your tears. Genuine joy is possible. Do not relent in your stands with Christ. Amen? Now let's rise up to our feet. We're going to pray tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before we pray, though, if anybody here is not saved, that's why we talked about alignment. Alignment is key. If you know that you have not given your life to Christ, please come up now. If you're watching online and you have not given your life to Christ, I'm going to pray a prayer with you because we can't pray these prayer points until we truly become in alignment with Christ. So just lift your voice and say, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I come to the mercy seat and I obtain mercy in this time of need. I've been trying to live life on my own, but Jesus, you're the only way, the truth and the light. I surrender my all to you and I receive grace to lay it down at your feet. Have your way in my life, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, the first prayer point we're going to take, we're going to ask for genuine healing. Before we begin to pull down altars and break iron bars and all that, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, heal the damages in my soul. I want you to pray from a healed place. Don't be praying that you want to get back to your neighbor who has been mocking you. No. Pray from a place of wholesomeness. Pray from a place of, I have overcome. Begin to lift your voice and say, Lord God, Lord every God, damage in my soul, every damage in my soul, every wounded area in my heart, every wounded area in my heart, I deploy the 
blood of Jesus. I deploy the blood of Jesus into those areas. Into those areas. And I establish my healing. And I establish my Begin healing. Begin to lift your voice for every way that you have been damaged. Face the real it and lay it on this altar tonight. Every place that takes you, that makes you cringe. Every area, the people who have affected you. Begin to pray tonight. Forgiveness and healing is here on this altar. We receive healing tonight. We receive healing tonight. We receive divine healing. We heal the mental battles. Your parents who have told you you will not amount to anything. Receive your healing tonight. The people in your job to have oppressed you. Receive your healing tonight. The people, your neighbors, your fellow peers, your siblings who have stabbed you in your heart. Receive it tonight. The people who mocked you and laughed at your situation and told you you would never rise up. Receive your healing tonight. Every place that you put your head down low. You're about to go back here. Triumphant. I see some victors here tonight. I see some victorious people here tonight. gates and iron bars. You must become a battle axe. The Bible says in Jeremiah that you are my battle axe. With you I will pull down kingdoms. With you I will dismantle. So you need to be a sharpened blade. You see the enemy knows if he can keep your blade dull, you can't break through anything. So you're going to ask God tonight, sharpen my blade as a first generation line breaker. You should never be found without a sharpened blade. You should never be found without a sword. You should never be found. My shaka pakosha. Begin to lift your voice and say, sharpen my blade tonight. I may have been gone. I may have been blunt for many years. But this is the time for the sharpening of the blade. My spirit, Some bronze gates and iron bars. 
But before we do that, we're going to enter the courts of heaven. So say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I enter the courts of heaven. I enter the courts of heaven. And I approach you as the righteous judge. And I approach you as the righteous judge. I present myself as a first generation line. I present myself as the first line generational breaker. And I come to obtain the verdict of the word of the Lord. And I come to obtain the verdict of the word of God. Every covenant in my bloodline. Every covenant in my bloodline. That keeps me bound. That keeps me bound. Every altar in my bloodline. Every altar in my blood that keeps me bound as a first generation. That keeps me bound as a first generation. I deploy the weapon of the blood of Jesus. I deploy the weapon of the blood of Jesus. I activate the advocacy of the blood. I activate the advocacy of the blood. And I break the legal ground. And I break the legal ground. In accordance to Colossians two fourteen. In accordance with Colossians two fourteen. Every legal right. Every legal right. Every handwriting. Every handwriting. Written against me. Written against. Is blotted out by the blood of Jesus. I enforce my freedom. I enforce my freedom. I break the limits. I break the limits. I silence the altars. Begin to lift your voice. Shake up the shadows. Lay back on the body. Arada masada makataya. It doesn't matter if you're the first. We pull down the altars. We silence the covenants. We break the legal ground. Everything trying to have your children captive. Ashka makata. Ileta arada masada. Arada tonda makataya. Iskete. represents judgment that's right so when the enemy enforces a bronze gate it's coming from a place of judgment judgment against your bloodline judgment against you because you decided to break the covenants that your ancestors established because you see in Psalm 74 verse 20 says God is a respecter of covenants so the reason why bronze gates are established is to enforce continuous judgment against you and iron represents a destroyer. They use iron in the Roman days to destroy the people. When you use iron, it destroys every other substance in your life. That's so this right. is, this is right, the reason why we must break the bronze gates. But you said the word of the Lord says, I will go ahead of you and make the crooked path straight. That's right. I will cut the bars of That's iron. Right. That's I will right. break the iron bars in two. Right. You will lift your voice and yeah, say, in the, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. every bronze gate, every, every, bronze bronze gate. every iron bar, every every iron that has stood in the way of my freedom. That has stood in the way of my destiny. That has stood in the way of my joy. I use my axe. And I break it to pieces. Begin to break, 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 break. Every prison. Every bronze gate. Every iron bars. Some of you are about to break loose tonight. I shut the curtain. I let the barrels come. I let the rattlers come. I shut the curtain. I shut the curtain. Anything that has tied your marriage. The bronze gate. We break, 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 we
You see, the strong men are the people, the demons, the powers that are positioned at the stage of success. This is the time, this is the syndrome of almost getting there but never getting there. Come on. They steal your goods. That's why it says you must bind the strong man before you enter the house. That's and then right. you plunder the strong man. You know why you plunder the strong man? Because he got your goods anyway. You need to steal it back from him because it belongs to you. So you're going to deal with the strong every time. It is time for you to enter that kingdom relationship. That strong man rears his ugly head. And even when you enter the marriage, the strong man makes it his duty to make sure you never have peace. To make sure you don't carry your children. To make sure you don't carry your promises we're going to break the head of the strong man tonight you're going to say in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus every strong man every strong that has oppressed me that has oppressed that has stolen from me that has stolen from I me. use my battle axe I use my battle and I break the head of the strong man begin to break 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 I shut up and talk they're going to release you tonight there's going to be a relinquishing break and talk I shut up and talk I shut up and talk I shut up and talk When your real face can't even show, you know what's happening? There's a familiar spirit that knows your DNA, that knows your design, and they go ahead of you instead. But the devil is a liar because my Bible says the spirit of the Lord will go ahead of me. Not a familiar spirit. You're going to release judgment on everywhere, any spirit that has misrepresented ah, you, misrepresented you to your destiny helpers, to your divine facilitators. We will release judgment tonight. Say in the name of Jesus, I release the judgment of God. On every spirit of misrepresentation, every familiar spirit that has robbed me of my blessings, that has made the world turn against me, I set you on fire. I crush you tonight. Begin to lift your voice. Shake your kata, ask your kata, ask it. We deal with every demon, every demon, and misrepresentation, and every misunderstanding. We crush them tonight. I shake your kata. You need to pray. you need fire this is the only thing that principalities and powers respond to they don't respond to your English they don't really care how many scriptures you know it is the fire that activates the word so you're going to ask the Holy Ghost to make you a ministering flame of fire it says uh, my angels are winds but I am a ministering flame of fire you're going to ask the Holy Ghost huh? activate the fire of God in me tonight make me a flame in my generation make me a torment to principalities and power begin to let your voice in this place tonight, ask Papa. There is fire. There is gonna be fire. Be activated in your children tonight. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. The fire.
Compensation for it is your right. It's not a request, it is a right. He said, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. He said, Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. For today I will restore double. Place a demand on the scripture. Yeah. Now, every place that has ever deprived you, every blessing that you could not hold in your hand. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Begin to place a demand. Let it drop on your head tonight. Shepakata. Maskelala la 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 to the kingdom of darkness the devil is in trouble you see the first step is realization the next step is activation the third step is establishment yes. you have been established tonight in the name of Jesus Amen. the places that used to oppress you you shall become a victim in the name of Jesus Amen. what used to hold you tight you shall keep it bound Amen. the strong man that used to oppress you you have become an oppressor Amen. tonight you are now represented Amen. as a flame in the realms of the spirit. Amen. You have become fire tonight. Amen. Every money and its stolen goods, Amen. it is restored now in the Amen. name of Jesus. You will not walk around with Amen. your head bowed down. Amen. You shall walk around with your held head high. Amen. He is a lifter of your head tonight. Amen. He is restoring to Amen. you. He is restoring your Amen. glory. He is restoring Amen. your power. He is restoring Amen. you tonight in the name Amen. of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. My time is up this evening. But what you will do with what has happened tonight, you will keep stirring it up. You will keep walking with the understanding. You will keep walking in your victory. Do not allow the enemy to deceive you back to who you were. You have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Leave here empowered. Whatever you see in your dream, it is a tool in your hand to fight. It is an opportunity to sharpen your blade. Use the enemy's head to sharpen your blade. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. You will come back here and testify in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will come back bearing your precious harvest Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those who are expecting, you will carry your expectation. Amen. You will get to the finish line. Amen. You will finish well Amen. and you will finish strong Amen. in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Amen. just begin to give God a big oh, round of praise. You, begin Jesus. to give God a big round of praise. Yes, Lord. I'm going to have Sister Esther round up for us. You can round up with a praise if you need to. Go ahead. Yes, you can round up. Whatever you feel like to do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We have prayed. Now it's time to praise God because it is done. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. So now put on your dancing shoes to give God gratitude. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Wait, sin, I don't give to him my prayer. Pause. You see, this is this exercise here. When you praise like this, it is a weapon, it is a sign of victory. You don't praise unless you have actually received the victory. So this praise dance is not the kind of normal praise dance. It is a victory dance. Yes. It is the kind of dance that you imagine on your wedding day. It is the kind of dance you carry when you're holding a million dollar Hallelujah. check. It is the kind of dance that lets you know you have mounted with wings like an eagle. So don't look at this dance. This is a victory dance. The Lord told me in my prayer closet yesterday, 
give me hours of praise because I need something to quantify what I've already done in the realms of the spirit. So this is a demand of praise. Lift Woo! your voice and give the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing, I go give to him my praise. Oh, my praise. shifted I'm telling you that something has shifted you will come back here and testify in Jesus name now let's share the grace before we leave may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord celebrating forever and ever amen tell your neighbor congratulations seven times congratulations 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 congratulations, congratulations. Woo -woo!